Hello, I'm Atubo George now. Praise God. Hey, today's Friday. Praise God. Listen, I want you to take the whole message from Monday and begin to listen again and again. Listen Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today's own. Praise God. And two, I I I I request that you share this message with your friends. Don't just keep it to yourself. It, it is wrong for you to enjoy things like this all by yourself. Share it. Share it with your friends. Say, hey, listen to this. Praise God. You remember those four leopards after Elisha had prophesied about the abundance the next day? When they saw food in those tents, they, were, they would pack and go hide, pack and go hide. And one of them said, hey, we do not write. What we're doing is wrong. Today is a day of salvation and we are keeping quiet. You see, let's go tell everybody. See, when you receive good things like this, it doesn't finish. So share with everybody. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I sense I sense something good is going to happen in your life today. Thank you, Jesus. Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I've been sharing with you all week. From Ephesians chapter 1. Now, we've been on this for weeks. It says, verse 19, we're dealing in understanding the power that was released. Power that was released. And Jesus said that power came when we receive the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is the one that carries that power. Meaning where the Holy Ghost is, or where the Holy Spirit is, you find there this power. For Paul is praying that you will know the exceeding greatness of this power. It takes spiritual revelation to know. Some of you don't realize that that thing you have been seeking and searching is already there. What you're thinking of struggling to get or to achieve, he has already given to you. There is nothing in life that you lack. Nothing. Believe me, nothing. There is no need that will show up in your life that the answer or supply to that need isn't available. The challenge most times is you don't see it. And sometimes it is not in, in, in the finished product. It is given to you in a different um, format. And it is it's left for you to open it up and let the goody come out. Sometimes God brings people into your life and you don't know the value of those people in your life. You don't know until the Spirit of God begins to help you unveil through your relating with them. And then you begin to realize, whoa. Now, God, you know, sometimes we have this mentality, you know, for example, when we talk about, um, there's this phrase we use in Christendom, it's a destiny help us. Now, don't have this mentality that, oh God, give me my destiny helpers, give me my destiny and God sends someone into your life. The person has some money, oh, this must be my destiny helper. So all your needs will throw on the person. That's wrong. That's wrong. When we talk about destiny helpers, we talk more on partnership. What value are you giving to that person? What value are you giving to that person? So don't just sit down there thinking how to collect, how to collect, how to collect. You've got something to give. 
you've got something to give. And that's why the Bible lets us know that God gives to the one who is good in his sight, wisdom, knowledge, and joy. If you are good before God, this is what God gives to you. This is your gift from God. What is it? Wisdom, knowledge, and joy. Wisdom, knowledge, and joy. So if you find yourself growing in wisdom, if you find yourself growing in knowledge, if you find yourself growing in joy, exceeding joy, now all these are done by the Holy Spirit. So in, in essence, God gives to the one that is good in his sight, the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Spirit is the one. He is, he is wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8. He introduced himself as wisdom. That's who he is. Same Proverbs chapter 4. He says, I am understanding. So he is the one who brings knowledge to us. And guess what? Peter says, because of him, we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. So he is the giver of joy. He is the bringer of joy. So when he says God gives to the one who is good in his sight, wisdom, no, he, simply put, he gives to the one who is good in his sight, the Holy Ghost. Now then, he says that you will know the power that this Holy Ghost carries. Now he says the one... God gives to the one who's good, as Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 26. God gives to the one who's good in his life, wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But to the sinner, I want you to follow this. The sinner, who's the sinner? The one who doesn't follow God's pattern. So he says, sinner, don't just think of the, 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 the one who's, who's, who's a drunk, the one who's just out there behaving anyhow. That's not the sinner. The sinner is the one who's not following the patterns of God. Because when you don't follow the patterns of God, you are sinning. Are you getting that now? So you can be a good churchgoer. You don't steal, you don't tell lies, but you're still a sinner. How are you a sinner? You don't follow the principles of God. See, you don't follow. If you don't tie it, for example, you're a sinner, no matter how, how, how righteous you, you look, no matter how pious you look, you are a sinner. If you don't tie it, you are a sinner. So what did I talk? Ah, I'm telling you the truth. Ah, and say, I'm not judging you. I'm telling you who you are. See that? It's not judgment. If I say something is white, I'm not judging it. Yeah? I'm just telling you what it is. It's, it's white. See that now? So what do you do? Adjust. So how do you say someone who doesn't tithe is a sinner? I'll tell you. Because when you don't tithe, you hold God's blessing from reaching someone. And that's the whole purpose of tithing. So you hold back God's blessing. So someone is praying and asking God for help. And, and you are holding God's money. And God wants to get that money to that person's hand. But he said, no, I'm not going to give it. I'm not going to give it. How do you think God sees you? A good guy? A righteous guy? Nah. So guess what happens to all sinners? Guess what happens to sinners? So the Bible says he gives to the sinner travail of sorrow to gather. See that tight you're refusing to give? You'll be gathering it. Yes. Gather and heap it up. Put it in that bank. Put it in that savings. Gather and heap up. And then he said, he that the purpose of his gathering and heaping up is so that he will eventually give it to the one that is good in God's sight. So you that have refused to yield to the Lord and the Lord to, for the Lord to give you the supply of his spirit that will cause wisdom, knowledge and joy to be increasing in your life. You have refused to do that. So what does that put you? That puts you in a place where God's going to give you an assignment. What's that assignment? You, okay, fine. You don't want to walk in my principles? Okay, God and hip hop. You will gather and heap up, a situation will happen, he will clear. Eventually, that money that you didn't want to give to the Lord, he will clear it and it will, it will still end up in the hand of a child of God. Oh, you don't know. You don't know. I will not tithe. All this tithing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, no problem. Heap up, gather. Something is going to happen one day. And then you require a man that has wisdom. And then the man that has wisdom is going to charge you. He charges you. You must pay. You pay. 
He transfers this guy is a good guy. He takes that money and then he begins, he tithes before the Lord. He, he, he gives and he does everything God wants him to do. That money will still eventually find its way to the hand of the righteous. You can't cheat God. <laughs> so, it's, so it's better you do it willingly and be blessed. Because this other one, at the end of the day, you might end up broke. Because you didn't give, so there is no blessing to it. But whatever you gather and heap up will eventually. You see, you can't fight God. <laughs> Praise God. It will eventually find its way to the hands of the righteous man. It eventually goes there. You can't stop it. So don't even try. Oh, I know what to do. I'll buy houses. I'll buy. Okay, no problem. Fine. You buy those houses. Keep them. You don't know what to do with them. Fine. Eventually, it will find its way into the hands of the righteous. I said eventually. Eventually. Praise God. That's what the scripture says. But then the question now is, you that is good in God's sight, are you increasing in wisdom, knowledge, and joy? Are you increasing in, in, the, in are you letting the influence of the Holy Spirit to increase in your life? Are you doing that? Because see, the more you expose yourself to the Lord, how do you expose yourself to the Lord? I'll share with you how by speaking in tongues, new ideas, new words are coming to you. And that's exposing yourself to the Lord. Listen, our spiritual exercise, every spiritual thing you do must be feeding your mind. If it is not feeding your mind, you will not live a better life. Because see, your living a better life will be as a result of your thinking. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he if you are thinking broke it doesn't matter how much they put in your hands you will eventually end up broke if you are thinking prosperity if you are thinking blessed thought you may not have money in your hands today but eventually you will do well it's as it's as simple as that it's all in your mind and from your mind words are expressed those words show who you are now then, the Lord is releasing the spirit that will cause you to be a witness. I'm going to begin to share with you next week how to relate and, and, and submit yourself to the spirit of God. That this, 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 this grace, this anointing that causes you to be a witness will be fully made manifest. Praise God. I want to pray for you right now. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, everything I've been sharing with you is to let you know that this life we have received is not ordinary. There is a power. And when you yield yourself, that power envelops you. It changes you. It controls you. And then it sets you on high. Father, I pray for everyone watching and listening right now. I ask, Lord, that you release your grace and your spirit upon their lives. Let your spirit literally affect their soul, affect their mind, and bring your truth, not just in them, but let it flow through them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, someone will learn pain in the gum you've been dealing with that gum pain it's inside your gum can you place your hand right there right now i command that gum to be healed in the name of the lord jesus i command that gum be healed in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for spending this time to watch this broadcast and for sharing it with your friends. I pray that this weekend is going to be your best weekend ever. The Spirit of God is going to take you by the hand and lead into the things that He has prepared for you. God bless 
you. I'll see you next week. Bye.